Majesty's revenue and customs sent two CDs to the National Audit Office, which never arrived. These discs contained sensitive data of 25 million individuals in the UK. The data consisted of names, addresses, dates of birth, national insurance numbers and bank details. In March 2007, the National Audit Office asked HMRC to send child benefit data via CDs. This operation proved to be successful and the package had been registered post. However, in this instance, the package HMRC sent to the National Audit Office was unrecorded via the courier service TNT and the disc never reached their intended destination. The package was sent on the 18th of October. On the 24th of October, the National Audit Office stated that nothing had arrived. HMRC management were told the data was missing on the 8th of November. Alistair Darling was informed on the 10th of November. He made a public announcement on the 20th of November. The data had only been password protected by WinZip software, which is an incredibly weak security measure considering it was protecting the details of half the United Kingdom's population. In the aftermath of this incident, it was found that the National Audit Office had requested bank details to be removed before HMRC posted these CDs. However, HMRC refused this request because of the complications and cost behind this amendment, which they claimed would have cost £5,000. A study later found this would have only cost £650. On the 17th of December 2007, it was found that the HMRC Data Protection Manual was restricted to senior members of staff and not junior civil servants, who only had knowledge of the manual in a brief summary. When the package had been sent, it was not registered via recorded delivery. As a result, it became increasingly vulnerable to getting lost in the post. In order to prevent future incidents like this, the package should be sent via a secure delivery method. Not every hacker is a computer genius. Sometimes, all it takes is a little password. There are thousands of people in a position of trust within IT, and lots of them leave on a daily basis. Most of them would never dream of logging back onto their former employee's network, except Jason Cornish. It seems really obvious, but there's one thing that security experts keep in mind of companies, and that is, if you're going to fire someone in a position of trust, it might be a good idea to change your passwords, especially if the guy's going to be a vindictive arsehole with the information he holds. Jason Cornish was a former IT administrator in the US subsidiary of Japanese drug company Shonagi. In July 2010, Cornish was fired by Shonagi, but then brought back as a consultant before being fired again in September the same year. Bad move. That's being fired for the second time, Cornish decided to use his free time wisely by messing with his former employees. Using the passwords and system knowledge he had gained from working for Shonagi, Cornish spent the next four months attempting to gain access to the company's network. In February 2011, he finally succeeded, while sitting in a McDonald's. Cornish uses a software called vSphere, a software that transforms an IT infrastructure into a private cloud, allowing delivery of IT infrastructures as an easily accessible service. He used this to delete the contents of 15 virtual hosts, roughly equivalent to 18, 88 different computer servers. The attack took down all of Shonagi's operations, leaving them unable to work for a number of days. This included the payroll service, meaning nobody got paid, the BlackBerry service, the order tracking systems, emails and more. The attack cost the company a massive $800,000. Cornish almost got away with the attack, but he used his credit card for five months before the attack to buy a burger. He now faces 10 years in jail and a hefty fine. There are many ways that this could have been prevented. Eric Chu, founder of High Trust, a vendor of virtualization and security products, has been quoted on the situation as saying, If Shonaki's critical systems were virtualized with proper automated controls in place, that could have detected what was happening in time for the company to stop him. People leave the job of a trustworthy stature all the time, and most of them never dream of logging back onto their former employees' network. Even so, all organisations should make sure their defences are in place, passwords are changed, and former employees' access revoked. IT staff should also be regularly reviewing the user database of the system to ensure that all users are legitimate and current. The moral of the story is that trust and management of an employee, regardless of current or former, is highly important to an organisation. Therefore, safeguarding your company can be used as an indirect solution to ethical management. For example, if you're going to disgruntle an employee or even fire them, then realise that they will probably hate you, or at worst hold vengeance against you.
This means it is essential that on firing the employee, he or she no longer holds authority to any systems and has no access or copy to any data belonging to the company. At this level, you know that an employee isn't going to have an easy way through. Ways of doing this could involve deleting the employee's user account, ask the employee to bring in their personal computing devices to check for work data, change any administrative passwords that he or she has access to, and the most common method is to back up your data. Whether the employee still exists within the company or not, backing up your data frequently is vital. Consistent backups will reduce the impact of data loss. Encrypted data will prevent unwanted people from seeing the data if lost in transit. So whether it is a former or current employee, make sure you safeguard your company, otherwise be prepared to be opened up to spamming, malware or even have your presentation slides replaced with porn.